So now that we discuss starting and exiting box cutter, let's now start box cutter and talk about cutting itself. So whenever you start box cutter, more than likely you will be in cut and you'll be in box and that will be all that's relevant for this moment. Right now we're working in orthographic and not perspective because perspective would give us some issues for this particular example. So the first thing I want to show is that if you have your mouse over the mesh and you begin clicking and dragging, you'll begin drawing a box. And then once you release, you're able to perform the extrude and then clicking again will actually apply the operation. If you begin cutting with your mouse off of the mesh, you'll perform what's called a view align cut where the cut is actually cut in accordance with your view instead of aligned with the surface. So this is an alternative way for you to perform cuts and cut things off of surfaces whenever you're trying to just get started with box cutter. However, the majority of the time you'll find yourself working with surface orientation and even more rarely you'll find yourself needing to override the orientation system and jump to view as you see me doing here where I can now perform cuts with my mouse over the surface despite being in a situation where it would normally be oriented to the surface, but instead it's now oriented to the view. So if we turn this off, we are now oriented back to the surface, drawing in 3D, and we're just drawing our boxes on here. Just drawing and extruding, and we could jump back to view align and perform our cuts just at the current view that we're looking at without any regard for any of the topology or geometry that's happening with this and then toggle it back off to go back to orienting to the object and drawing it aligned with the surface. So if we take this moment to rotate our view, we can see kind of what this shape has turned into. It's just a uh, conglomeration of a multitude of view aligned cuts combined with us doing some cuts on the surface, just going over this in a cursory fashion. So that in a nutshell is how you use the box aspect of box cutter. So with the new file, we're now going to change from box over to circle. And the first thing I want to show with circle is that whenever you're using circle, you can hold shift and scroll in order to adjust your segments. In fact, we will press tab to pause and just hold shift and adjust our segments and we can see the hops notifications displaying the amount of segments more vibrantly on the screen versus the uh, box cutter information that's been cut off by all of the hotkeys that are in the status bar. But just letting you know that whenever you're in circle, you're able to shift scroll in order to adjust the amount of segments that you have going on. If this is a behavior that you do not wish to have happen with circle, under input, there should be a behavior for shift scroll adjust circle. So by turning this off, you can actually make it where the circle resolution is locked. However, my favorite way to use circle is to just draw a circle, pause it, and then press control D and use the mini helper that has little presets for quick settings of the circle in order to get to the resolution that you want. In fact, you can just click on a field, type in 128 if you're that sort of mad lad, and just quickly get to the resolution that's relevant. So we'll just click to apply this. The next one I want to talk about is Lasso. Lasso is a freehand drawing tool. However, it does expand into a couple of other universes. So first we want to use Ingon, but we want to uh, make sure Cyclic's on. And this is your classic run of the mill Ingon where you're just freely able to draw a shape. In this case, notice that I'm drawing and it's able to have angles snap automatically. This is because underneath the snapping settings, I have enabled angle lock. And angle lock is a way to have snapping enabled without having to hold control, reducing the amount of keystrokes needing to be used in order to perform what I consider a simple operation. So to show Ingon again, we're drawing just on the surface and notice that we're automatically aligned to it. I'm just clicking and dragging and just drawing points. So this is one of those things that, you know, if you're a new user, just spending a little bit of time practicing it, you should be able to get acquainted with it fairly fast. So let's rotate our view and hold alt to snap it to a side view. And we'll just begin drawing off of the mesh to create another Ingon cut. And we look at this and we see that it cut all the way through the mesh because I did not rotate the view in order to indicate the depth. So we're going to rotate it at a slight angle. And this time we're looking at it at a kind of a contrapasta. And we will just perform a cut just working in this from an angle. So we will just cut this in 
and just look at it from this particular angle that we cut it and it's just a uh, demonstration of how you can use end gun in conjunction with view align and surface to get a variety of different types of cuts so the next one I want to talk about is some of the additional behaviors that are part of end gun so if you turn off cyclic you activate something called end gun line which is basically a panel line that can be cut with end gun whenever it comes to adjusting the thickness of this line all you have to do is just press T and you'll be able to adjust the thickness of it on the fly. And then from there, just a matter of dragging your dot in order to extrude and we can perform the extrusion and we can still even adjust the thickness. And if you're looking at your hotkeys for help down here, you can see that there's a multitude of things we could be doing, ranging from pressing G to grab to move this thing freely, uh, clicking to apply, we can even array it and mirror it. But Really, Ingon line comes in handy for times where you just need to perform um, very specific line cuts. So the next one I wanna talk about is Lasso. So if we turn on Lasso, we see that Lasso has a couple of additional parameters that show up. We've done our best to make it where Lasso is a pretty nice experience out the box without you having to go in and adjust anything. But if you need finer increments between your Lasso, this is where you would lower this parameter. Adaptive allows it to have an equidistant amount of points regardless of how your view is set. And we have this enabled by default because we feel this is the intended default behavior for people experiencing lasso. So to show lasso in action, we'll just begin drawing off of the mesh and just notice that I'm able to draw freely. And then once I rotate the view, I'm able to begin dealing with the amount of depth that I'm giving this particular cut. Lasso is one of those tools that is just rarely used, but it's just one of those things that was just on the checklist that we had to accomplish. And so I'm just showing you it in action just so you can have an idea of just how you can just easily get in with lasso and easily draw freehand shapes without any further ado. On the side of the tool, similar to cut is a little quick connection, uh, quick connection option that will basically allow you to toggle a particular behavior. So lasso has the behavior of line as a toggle as does end gone where you can quickly toggle lasso to be something like a line like you see here and we can just begin cutting into the mesh using just a dotted line and then of course keep in mind at any point we can just press T in order to adjust the thickness to get it just right and then once again click to apply. So the final shape I want to talk about is custom. Custom is a rather unique shape and could deserve a video all on its own talking about its complexities but we'll delete the shape and shift A add a new shape and one of my favorite things with custom is that while you're in custom, you can press C to specify a shape to be the custom cutter. And so because we're cutting the shape that we specified as the cutter, this means that every time I perform a cut, every cut will exponentially get more interesting because of the self-cut capabilities added to custom cutter. Custom cutter is just one of those things that we've been tinkering with so long that it's become just a masterpiece all on its own and it's something that we're extremely proud of and look forward to continuing to expand. But the ability to use it to rapidly and procedurally just generate detail just of the most random nature is something that appeals to me personally and I'm quite proud of all the work that has went into it. In fact, you can see as I cut it gets heavier and heavier because we're literally cutting the mesh with itself. But we can also see that the details that it's getting are just more and more interesting resulting in a shape that just exponentially continues just getting better and the best part about it all is is that we can shift right click and just say add a cylinder and on the cylinder we can just jump off this point at the top use period to use center instead so we're not holding as many hotkeys and once we begin extruding this down we begin really getting that box city very quickly in fact to fix the shading we'll just put a couple of edge loops in there and to really fix the shading, we can use hard ops and basically alt click subdivision to send it all the way up the stack, which will compromise its uh, silhouette because we do not have sharpening on it yet. But because we didn't enable seam increase, whenever we perform sharpen, it didn't actually harden the edges as intended. But now we have it, you know, replicating our box city that we created here inside of a cylinder while kind of holding the form together but just showing a little bit of what Custom Cutter is capable of just in action. So to show it a little bit more, we can even have a 2D shape and let's just press C in order to make this the Custom Cutter. 
and we also want to press period during our draw in order to turn off the custom state and we can begin just cutting the shape and just reusing it over and over just on a 2D level. So it's a lot similar to exactly what I was just showing you with the 3D, but analyzing the result of just cutting things exponentially over and over in 2D is also a really interesting way to just become acquainted with what you can get out of custom cutter when it comes to box cutter. So just like that, we were able to quickly cut a futuristic sci-fi UI just using the same shape that we were using just over and over, cutting in different regions decrementing our scale as we went. But that, in short, covers all of the cutters that are available inside a box cutter.